Okay, the last of the bonus content material for the Blender Dungeon here. We're gonna take a little look at the sculpting mode here. So we're gonna grab the staircase. In our scene here, we can see that the stairs are kind of razor sharp right on here because basically we just took the default cube here, or a basic cube, and then added this bevel on here. And the stairs look really sharp and everything else in our scene is looking kind of wonderfully worn except for the stairs. Now, the reason why this is part of the optional content is it's a big topic that you don't really have to get into. It's great if you wanna get into character creation or all kinds of stuff. Sculpting is very powerful in Blender. It's not quite ZBrush, but it's pretty close considering that ZBrush is a very expensive program and Blender is free. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab the upper level of our stairs over here. I'm gonna go over here to these sculpting tabs. I'm gonna click on that little tab here and it's gonna take us back into the shaded view. One thing I highly recommend that you do in this case is this is a great place to hit the backslash or the question mark key over there just to isolate. You don't need the whole rest of your model in there. So go ahead and isolate that by hitting the question mark backslash key there. So we're looking at just this one staircase. Now, this is a huge topic. Basically, the sculpting workspace inside of Blender is a whole nother program that we haven't even really talked about yet. But I want to show you a couple of the basics. It's a great thing that you can go into and play on your own. And there's just a, a thousand really high quality videos on YouTube. That's Grant Abbott, the one of the guys that I've recommended. is a really terrific person. He's got a lot of sculpting videos and it takes his time and it's very kind of quiet and, and thoughtful about the way he, he presents those videos. So I really recommend Grant Abbott's videos if you want to get into the sculpting. So first of all, you'll see that we have this little brush that's kind of floating around over our shape here. And the same tools that we've been using, the middle mouse to orbit and all that kind of thing are also working. What we want to do though, is you have to basically break this mesh. Right now, there's only like one big end gone over here, one big face over here. And and there's a little rectangle over here and another one here and another one here. We don't really have a lot to work with right now. So there's two different ways to do this. We can add a whole bunch of more topology on this, some more polygons on there, or we can do that in a dynamic way. And so I really recommend if you're just playing with this for the first time, just come over here and use the Dynatopo here, which is basically dynamic topology, kind of portmanteaued into one word over here. So we're going to check that little box over here. And this is giving you a warning saying, this is going to mess up your UV map. And yeah, but we'll fix it at the end. We know we're gonna it's gonna do that so we're just gonna say okay so don't worry about that big scary uh, warning over there and you notice there is a dynamic topology box over here that you can uh, mess around with as well. It's the same thing. It's in this little drop down. So either place. So we're notice that we're starting off with a 12 pixel resolution scale here, which means we're going to be roughing this in pretty boldly. So if your computer is struggling a little bit to, to deal with all of the polygons that are being added, you could keep it fairly rough and then we can just shade smooth it at the end and that'll look okay as well. Notice that we have the radius of the brush over here. You can use this with a, uh, a tablet and use pressure sensitivity if you want. That's a fun way to work. Um, so you can change the radius by sliding this up and down here. You can also change the strength over here as well. And you'll notice that there is a an addition and a subtraction mode. In this, some cases, we may actually want to use the subtraction mode uh, for that. Holding down the control key will automatically put you into the subtraction mode as well. So we're just going to use the basic draw brush. You can see there's a whole lot of brushes. And sometimes just go in and, you know, with a default cube or whatever, go in and just kind of play with what all these do. They all do sort of different things and they're all basically meant to mimic the, the sense of the tools that you would use if you were working in clay. They've added a couple of really cool ones down over here, some of these cloth simulation brushes down down below. There's some really cool stuff. So we've got the dino topology turned on here and make sure that you have the ability to mirror with this XYZ axis over here, the little butterfly, make sure those are turned off because we probably don't want to mirror for this. What we really want to do is add some wear and tear to the edges of the steps. So if I just go over here to the side of this and just kind of do a little click. I'm just holding them up with my mouse. Uh, I've just kind of added in a little sort of bump on there. And you can see it's very faceted looking here. And it'll look better if we were to show that shade smoothing on. Now the whole thing looks horrible right now, but you know, that softens it up there. We could we could fix that later on. But this is pretty good to start off with. You want to think about sort of big bold strokes here. So if you want to add some, you know, heavy junk over here, um, ruster or large pieces of things, start big and then work fine detailed later on. I'm actually going to go ahead and move it over into this negative mode here. I'm just going to click up into the negative mode, which I could also get just by holding down the control button. But since I'm going to be doing a lot of it, I'm just going to take on this corner here and I'm just going to kind of knock it down a little bit. I'm just going to sort of wear this edge. I'm just holding down the mouse, the left mouse button, and I'm just kind of wearing down this edge. And you can see it starts off pretty 
coarse, you know, the, the polygons that are making are fairly big triangle pieces there. So you can just kind of go along the whole thing here and just sort of wear down these sides a little bit. Now you could come in and use some other tools. Like for example, some of these yellow ones over here aren't sort of adding or subtracting, they're just sort of moving things around. So the grab tool or the elastic to form, these are ones that are really great for kind of like grabbing a whole area. In fact, I'll just increase the radius of the brush a little bit bigger here and I'll just sort of like push down. See how I'm like pushing down a lot. In fact, I might be a little too big. Let me back that down a bit. So that's kind of adding the sense that the, the stairs are kind of being worn from the middle there, you know, like you see a lot of times in old stairs. You can do it. This is using a bigger tool uh, to do that really quickly. And then you can come back into things like that draw brush or whatever. Now, if you feel like, all right, I've got this all kind of worked out now. Here, I'll just quickly do this down the hole. Whoa, that's a little faster. Oh, do be aware that how far zoomed out you are also has an effect on how much you're wearing it down. So you got to be careful. I backed out a little too far there. Um, which is actually kind of handy if you really want to, you know, melt something away very quickly. You can just sort of zoom out of it. So that's that's something like that. That might be a little too coarse over there, but that's the right idea. Let me just come over here and just push that side down. And then I'm going to turn the plus back on and just give this a little bit of contouring over here. So it isn't, you know, when the light hits this plane, it's not kind of, you know, perfectly shiny on there. This whole side here is a little rougher. All right, now I can either come back over here and change the number here, or if you have it open on the side menu, I'm just going to drop this number down to a little bit of finer detail there. So maybe I'll drop it down to like, say, two-ish. Here, I'll just type in here. You can always type in these two. And now make the radius of the brush a lot smaller, and I can come in and maybe, you know, sort of add some like, you know, small protrusions here. Let me go back to the negative and add some sort of cracks in here or whatever. And again, these are just a, this is just the simplest brush. It's like a pencil, you know, it's like a pencil tool in Photoshop, you know. There's all these other tools that you can add in here that you can use to give yourself sort of more interesting details in here. The one that you're probably going to want to also be aware of is the smooth brush. And you can, the smooth brush lives over here, or you can just hold down the shift key while you're working with any other tool. So if I were to come in here with a smaller brush, and maybe I want to just kind of like work away a little bit more on some of these stair treads, you know, make a few of these a little bit more broken. That looks kind of neat. But I've got all this weird faceting. Well, just hold down the shift key here. Let me make the radius a little bit bigger. And holding down that shift key, just, it just kind of softens it. It's kind of like, I don't know, taking a blow dryer to some wax or something. It just kind of like melts away a lot of that topology. And that looks okay. So again, I could spend a lot more time. You can get carried away with this and, you know, sort of fall down a rabbit hole. But that's giving you a, a really quick sense of how this looks. So now what we're going to do is come out of this sculpting mode. You don't need to save anything. Let me just hit that corner real quick. You can just go right back to the layout menu there. If you, when you click on that layout menu. And there's our little scene in here, but we notice that we have lost the material. So in order to fix that, we can just go select my stair object, uh, tab into edit mode, select A to grab everything on there, and then I'm going to hit U and just go Smart UV Project. Now we could go in and do a whole lot more time and energy in this if we were uh, really wanted the faces to you know align up. But since it's just this kind of like sandy, gritty pattern, that looks fine. I'll go back into where the camera view is. The the home button to get in there. And now we can see, maybe I, I might have gotten a little carried away there with some of the wearing of that down, but you can see you've got something that looks a whole lot different. This sort of sculpted down version of this looks a lot better, or at least a lot more in the rest of our scene than this really crisp, razor sharp thing. If you're doing some sort of sci-fi thing or it's all everything's brand new, then you know maybe you want all these sharp edges, but you can come down and do as much damage as I've done here, uh, where I've kind of made it look like a lump of Play-Doh, or you could come in and make this much more gentle and uh, and soften up just you know some of these corners. Of course, you could bevel them as well, but the problem with beveling it is that you're going to get a very uniform rounding over. And the nice thing about the sculpting is you can very quickly kind of create a very organic effect. So that is absolutely the tiniest tip that's that's underneath the penguin's foot that is standing on top of the iceberg of the uh, uh, information about sculpting that you can find so if this interests you there i really encourage you to uh, investigate grant abbott or plenty of the other places just type in blender sculpting for beginners or whatever and you can find all kinds of really amazing stuff i do recommend though that you make sure that you're using a more recent video with if they're using a 2.9 or a 2.82 or whatever because there's been an enormous amount of changes in how the sculpting tool work in the more recent video. So if you're looking at a video from two or three years ago, a lot of that information is going to be out of date. So hopefully you can spend some time playing with that.